Thank you, Sarah. This is Bob Aschenbrenner. Before we talk about mobility costs, let's talk about how mobility has been used and is being used and will be used in the field. Field service organizations have used a lot of different techniques over the years to communicate with their techs. Everything from dispatch lists on paper that are handed out in the morning, phone calls during the day back and forth between the office and the technicians, and the first uses of mobile devices were really either with email or something like Outlook Calendar for the scheduling. These were all methods which helped the right tech get to the right address at the right time. Information about the service visit was written down and then delivered at the end of the day back to the office where it was either transcribed into a server or placed into a folder for the customer. Also, all the billing input was done. Today, we see two kinds of uh, two key tests that are greatly improved by giving mobile devices to field technicians. Efficient dispatch and the real-time recording of what happened during the visit. So those are really the first two things that happen when mobile devices have been deployed to the field. Uh, now there's a growth into even more capabilities, things like online work procedures, uh, the occasional video chat with a remote expert, uh, selling extended warranties to a customer, which enhances revenue opportunities, and other additional services. And these are something that are possible to be considered once a baseline mobile device is in the hands of technicians in the field. Those organizations considering purchases today, um, these field organizations, they need to work within their budget and their needs. The best way to meet your goals is to make the right choices up front, of course. Short-term choices that need to be changed will quickly become the more expensive way to go. So we'll walk through how to make the best choice for your organization and how this path can result in the lowest total cost of ownership. With that in mind, there are basically two approaches that are common. One is to focus on cost in the current buying cycle, whether that's the current fiscal year or even just a quarter or two. The other way is to plan a rollout over multiple quarters. But regardless of how your organization manages new deployments, it's always best to consider the entire workflow that you want to support. That gives you the focus you need so that you can make sense out of the many, many choices out there. Once you've thought through the workflow that you want to support now and in the future, then the whole world of choices becomes more clear. So let's step back and look at this a starting point. Virtually every field support organization first automated their back office. Of course they did. Operations needs a central repository for work orders, the results, accounts receivables. And also there's the operations of the business, things like worker time cards, training records, truck maintenance schedules were stored there. And Every organization found a way to extend the software that's running on that back office server to the field. First, it was with taper and phone calls. A tech would pick up a schedule of calls for the day. And then during the course of the day, the office would be calling them to find out where they are along their schedule. Uh, many of us have had experience, probably, as recently as a few years ago, when we are home waiting for a service tech who might, have, might be late for an appointment. We would call the office. They would have to then call the tech, find out where they are, how much longer they would take, and then call us back. In a way, this, is, this was how the software and the operations control from the back office servers was extended to the field. Lots of phone calls, rudimentary emails, etc. And then when the day was finished, the tech had to come back and put that information on the, ser on the server. Usually the technician would hand it off to somebody. So extending these capabilities directly to the field would streamline things. That is, if we could find a way to give that server to the field techs. Um, but of course, a desk-bound server isn't mobile at all. 
that's really not a choice. So one thing that people have considered over the years is notebook PCs. Over the last 20 years, they've been a viable product, and they're designed for portability, and uh, many were considered for in-field use. They can run almost all the software that a field organization would want because they could run virtually all the software that the back office PC was running. But because they really aren't mobile, that is, they really can't be used while standing and working, which is the way a field tech wants to operate, they were relegated to in-vehicle use only. Most field organizations didn't even deploy them. They were commonly seen in things like police cruisers, where a permanent mounting made more sense because police officers often use the cruiser more like a mobile office. For those service organizations that did deploy notebooks, they found the clamshell design caused even more problems. And that's because to make a notebook and its screen more likely to survive in a rugged environment, the hinges, the cabling had to be beefed up, and that thin screen needed more support. That required extra mass to protect the notebook. And that added weight. Seven pound notebooks, even nine pound notebooks are not that uncommon in this space. So when you limit when you limit it by a clamshell design that you really can't use while standing and working, and seven pound bulk, they stay mounted in the trunk in the truck. Over the last five years or so, consumer tablets have become very popular in home use. We all have those. These very light tablets are very mobile too. So there's been an obvious interest among field support organizations. But the limitations of these for home devices became apparent pretty quickly. First of all, they don't run your software. Uh, they have no or limited I.O. capabilities. And they really don't have great wireless antennas and radios. And they don't really need to for their intended purpose. They generally need to connect to a wireless access point that's usually in the same room as the tablet on your bookcase, on your entertainment center. And lastly, of course, they're fragile. They are not likely to survive a day in the life of your technician. There's a project lead at an Explorer customer, and he keeps a smashed iPad in his desk drawer. When new employees come in and he issues them a new rugged tablet, they invariably ask, what's this? Why not an iPad? He pulls out the iPad out of his drawer and says, this is why. And most field service organizations have discovered the same thing, if they even try to use consumer tablets. So let's step back and look at this again. The requirement in the back office to run the software is a fully capable PC, sometimes with an Intel i5 or i7 processor. A lot of memory and storage is needed, and a full-size keyboard, a full display, and a mouse is typically used. And of course, there are many desktop PCs that fulfill this requirement. But there's also tablet PCs. When used along with a docking stand, also allow the use of a full-size keyboard, display, and mouse. Clearly, they're capable of running all of your software. Now, my point here isn't to necessarily sell tablets in the back office. The point is the tablet PCs today are so capable they could be used in that space, and therefore, they clearly can run any software you might need in the field. So consider next moving that same tablet to a truck. You can mount it in a docking station in a vehicle or on a forklift or a shipyard container crane, all places where we know rugged tablets have been used. These rugged tablet PCs will survive in these environments. They displace any notebook PC that may have been used previously because they can run all the software tools needed. They also have the option of a keyboard that can be mounted in the vehicle. They often contain built-in GPS and high-gain radios, which mean they can be reliably connected to the back office for dispatch and real-time information. The rugged tablet PC can run all the software dictated by your back office system. Now, 
let me repeat that, dictated by your back office systems. You're not necessarily running all the software from the back office systems, but software that's integrated well tends to run on the same operating system and needs similar capabilities. That can be available in the truck. And on the next slide we see, can also be carried to the point of service. These tablets can be easily removed from the vehicle and carried to the site. They have outdoor viewable screens. They're not affected by rain and temperature extremes. And they're regular enough to survive the drops and bangs that are going to happen. And these mobile tools can run the software you need for real-time access. This is like what's called in utilities the last mile issue. It's easy to get real-time information in an office or a truck, but how do you get it to the tech on site? Well, with a rugged tablet PC, the problem is solved. A fully capable PC with long runtime on battery, designed to be used outdoors, and light enough to be carried wherever the, turk is, wherever the work is. That's a tablet PC. They let the techs easily access information wherever they need it. They can input relevant data in many ways. They can use a touch screen or active pen input. They can use cameras for photos to record work done or situations they encounter. Barcode scanners can be used to input equipment and parts data. And even wireless keyboards are available if something long has to be typed when there's a flat surface or an office nearby. So, a rugged tablet PC is a no-compromise solution. It could run everything in your back office, it does run everything in your truck, and it can be carried with the technician anywhere they have to go where the work is, that last mile. And now I'd like to pass the discussion over to Tom Cost, who will talk about how the choice of a tablet affects the cost. Tom? Hey, thanks a lot, Bob. Um, really great job. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about the rest, but I'm totally convinced uh, we should use tablets in field, sort of field service organizations. It's a no-brainer. But now let's talk about um, why that's not only a good choice uh, for, for getting the work done, but why that's also a great choice from a cost perspective. So, you know, every time a mobile device fails, it adds costs. And, and that's why the rugged tablets are designed to survive in whatever environment the work throws at you. So the environmental realities of rain, heat, and cold, not to mention humidity, salt, air, bright sunlight, all of these cannot be allowed to affect the utility of the tablet. Uh, just like a weak link in a chain, if any of these can cause problems, the whole solution is going to be flawed. Then there's the reality of how these tools are treated. Uh, there will be the everyday bumps, bangs, and drops. There will be puddles and blowing dust. You know, a successful tool has to deal with all of these, too. So look for the tablet PCs that are designed for your environment, the places where your people go to do the work. That's why when Rob talked about in the beginning about analyzing the workflow, the workflow is just not what they're doing, but how they're doing it and where they're doing it. It's, it's all those components are equally important. Um, it's important, you know, when you choose devices to, uh, you know, look for a company that publishes the test data that proves uh, the tablet can survive in these environments. And then, you know, there's also requirements to have the tools survive extreme work days, and by that I mean long battery runtimes are sometimes needed. Um, you know, regular in-vehicle charging is great, but it isn't always practical. We have customers that that work outdoors in the field all day long, uh, and they need great battery life. They can't be tied to the vehicle. Uh, lastly, there's also hazardous locations that have volatile gases in the environment where a spark can cause an disaster. A disaster. So, you know, in these situations, you're faced with two choices. Either don't use a mobile device at all, or, or use one that's certified uh, safe in hazardous location. So, um, the tablets that are certified let your techs get the work done quicker and safer. Now let's consider the cost of these devices. The tablet PCs fit the workflow best, so what are the choices that can affect the cost? Well, there's some questions about the cost choices like, you know, what is the price difference up front between rugged and non-rugged devices? Okay. 
how much more will I save in the future if I choose a rugged device? Um, where are those savings going to come from? If, if the rugged PC costs more up front, uh, you know, wh why is it cheaper in the long run? So the answer is to consider the total cost of ownership and how really the longer term factors is what influences the total cost more. So the real determinant of the cost savings or the total cost of ownership, it's really how well the solution works today, but more importantly, how it will continue to work in the future as business demands and the tech landscape evolves, right? So, you know, for these tablets, there's a couple of different jobs that they got to be able to do. Number one, job one, run the tools. You have to be able to run all the necessary software and run them well. You've got to have the radio support, and you, you really let the, the programs and the applications that you want to choose define the tablet operating system and the working set of features, right? You kind of want to take it through a flow. First, here's the apps. That determines the operating system. I need this much performance. I need these features. I want to make sure that we get you know, the right solution in place. Windows operating system, Android, those cover about 90% of all service deployments needs for software capability. So it's really what fits your back end. That's the key point. Job number two, what's the day in the life of these devices? How much will it be used in and out of a truck? You may need a vehicle dock. How much runtime on battery do you need? Do you need a second battery option to extend the runtime? Does your team use it outdoors? You're, you're going to need you know, a product that has a very high bright screen that's viewable outdoors. How much data entry? Uh, does the data entry vary when on site? Is, are you just doing check boxes or when you go back to the office are you typing up reports? So you know, again, thinking about the workflow and, you know, how the tech's going to use it is very important. Would a barcode scanner uh, help scan more quickly and accurately from different devices and parts, um, you know, keeping track of the inventory, what tools and equipment you have in place? Uh, you know, would a camera help to document solutions? So all these different things. And job three is, you know, make sure that you support not only the workflow now, but also in the future, right? The biggest hit to a budget is have to replace devices that become obsolete before their time. So, you know, penny wise, pound foolish is definitely a case that can happen here. You want to plan for devices that can expand their capabilities in the future. And honestly, consumer, you know, devices typically don't do that. Tablet PCs are really the only no compromise choice. They run all the software, they fit your back end, you use them outdoors, they work in all the environments, and they've got all the peripherals that you need to be successful. So one common mistake is to choose what seems like, you know, going to be a cheaper option, these low-cost consumer tablets. Yeah, they only cost sometimes a few, three, four, five hundred dollars, but at that price, they're not even usable yet. You need to buy new applications. You need to spend money to, to integrate them with your back office. You won't have the efficiencies of things like barcode scanners and vehicle docks. Um, you'll need protective cases, which not only cost money, but you know these consumer tablets, the shape tends to change from year to year. So when the shape changes, then the cases change. So you won't even be able to, to reuse the cases. Um, the life cycle of these devices is just very short. Another cost is the, the lack of removable batteries. So it's obviously much cheaper to replace a worn out battery than it is to replace the entire tablet. But with the consumer devices, those batteries are not readily accessible. So after you, even if you accept all these issues, your tech still won't be able to see the consumer device outside in the sun. Commercial notebooks uh, and tablets are sometimes considered. They'll run the software you need. They've got plenty of horsepower. Some of them have removable batteries. Even a few of them have outdoor screens. But there is a reason that most rugged and lightweight mobile devices are the tablet form factor. That's because the structure needed to protect the notebook becomes really prohibitive in terms of weight 
in terms of size and bulk, uh, in terms of cost as well. Uh, it's just not a very efficient way to make a, a device, and, and then you can't use it when you're out of the vehicle as well. So these notebooks, they're portable, but they're not truly mobile like a tablet is. They are very difficult and impossible to use while standing and working. Sometimes companies like to use a mixed model. So giving handhelds like smartphones to some techs, tablets or notebooks to others, and maybe even a, a bring your own device model. Um, the handhold workflow makes sense if you have a limited set of work tasks, but they, and they, they're not expected to change over time. But this approach may become more expensive because we really don't know what tasks may be needed in year three, four, or five, or sometimes even next year. We see services transforming now uh, with higher technical capabilities coming online, like the Internet of Things and other new paradigms, uh, real-time flow of information to the technicians in the field. And service in many organizations is reinventing itself from a cost center to a profit center by creating value-added services that customers will pay for. So you may not know what you want to do one to two, three years down the road. Uh, why not choose a device that's a lot more powerful and flexible and, and designed for this type of work that, that you can deploy these kind of value-added services? So if you're confident your tax are repetitive and unlikely to change, a handheld might make sense. But for the flexibility that allows you to take advantage of a five to seven year life cycle that we typically see for these purpose-built devices, a rugged tablet is really a much better choice. Now, hey, you Tom, do hear a this lot is about Sarah. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, we lost our audio for just a moment, so I was wondering if maybe you would just go back and, and start at the top of that last slide, um, just to make sure that uh, everyone you know doesn't miss anything. Okay, got it. So on slide 17, then yes. Yep. So um, another approach that some companies have used is is kind of a mixed use model. Um, and this means they give handhelds like smartphones to some techs. They might give tablets or notebooks to others, or some companies even have a BYOD model. Um, the handheld workflow, it, it makes sense if you have a, a really limited set of work tasks and they, they don't change over time. But really this approach might be a lot more expensive because we don't know what tasks might be needed in years three, four, or five, uh, sometimes even next year. So service is transforming now, uh, not only with higher capabilities coming online, uh, utilizing new technologies like the Internet of Things or you know, live access to diagrams and other new paradigms, but many service organizations are reinventing themselves from, from a cost center to, to a profit center, and, that, and that's a great thing. Um, you know, creating new value-added services that customers will pay for. You want to you want to make sure your device is is ready to handle what comes in the future. So, if you're confident that the tasks that your workers are doing are repetitive and unlikely to change, a handheld might make sense. But for the flexibility that allow you to take advantage of the five or even seven-year life cycle that we typically see in purpose-built devices, a rugged tablet is is a much better choice. Another mistake uh, that comes up quite often is, you know, thinking that the rugged case, you know, is is uh, offering the same level of protection. Can you add a rugged case to a non-rugged device? Sure. They're not nearly as effective. And the tablets, they're not built with a ruggedness in mind. They often change form factor, like I said before, every 6 to 18 months. This is a, this is a cost hit and a real hassle. So... You know, the net-net is the, the cases can extend the life of, of non-rugged tablets, but not enough to offset the additional cost, um, the need to replace the tablets and cases every generation. And, the, you know, even then, some of the, some of the products are going to be damaged because they're just not as, as rugged as a device that's built from the ground up rugged. So, really... Kind of the biggest mistake that we see folks making um, 
forgetting about the opportunity cost. You know, one, once you've made a choice on the device, whether it's a good fit or not, your, your organization is going to have to support it. You know, the IT staff will have to replace the broken units, which includes loading software images and security credentials, dispatching units to the field techs, recovering the broken units, managing the return for repairs. Um, it's just one incident really creates, you know, hours and hours of work. Um, all of this will have to be done while under the pressure of, of getting the techs back to work because not only is it the, all the time involved of, of fixing it, but the guy's not able to get his job done. So, you know, a, a tech whose tool has broken is either down completely or very inefficient until that tool is replaced. This lost time becomes a bigger and bigger issue as minutes and hours pass. If, if your field failure rate is greater than expected, you will be expected to do something about it. And more of your energy and focus will be on this mitigation. It's, it's not a real permanent fix since the decision had already been made what to deploy, but the, mitigating the effects of what turned out to be a bad decision is what you'll be spending a lot of your time on. Um, so hidden in this mitigation response are the future opportunities that are not being addressed. Like I mentioned before, turning your, your service uh, from, a, from a cost center into a profit center would be probably a much better use of your time. Uh, than fixing broken consumer devices. So this loss of the future may be the biggest cost hit of them all. How can your organization focus on the future when it's fixing the past? If you made a bad choice, it, it'll put a lot of pressure on the ID department to, to fix it faster. Don't paint yourself in the corner. You won't get a rematch. You'll just have to punch your way out. It's not going to be too enjoyable. So. With all that set up, then, let's actually go through and talk about some of the real costs here. Um, here are the ways that our partner, VDC, has analyzed these costs. VDC is the premier business analyst company in the rugged space, and they've spent a lot of effort quantifying the true cost of a mobile device rollout. First and foremost, there's the hard costs. It's pretty straightforward to add those up. Uh, there's the cost of the hardware, not just the tablets, but the peripherals and accessories that you need. Uh, accessories that range from barcode scanners, vehicle docks, and, and many others. Then there's also software licensing fees, whether upfront, per seat, uh, annual maintenance. They all add to the cost, especially if there are development costs due to choosing new software. So, you know, when you pick a, a fully capable, rugged tablet PC that runs a, you know, common back office operating system, a lot of your applications, they just work. They don't need any, any you know, massaging. Uh, all your legacy applications are ready to go. Uh, if you make other choices with consumer devices, that, that may not be the case. So uh, to the extent the, <clears throat> the new software and tools are used, there's potentially big costs for system design and integration. But then there's other costs, uh, the, the cost that VDC calls soft costs, but these really still count. Training is one. Uh, the more different the mobile tools are, the, the higher the cost, but, uh, you know, the more similar they are to what you have in your organization, now the lower cost. So then there's, there's also the operational cost to maintain everything, manage the rollout, upgrades, patches, and potentially the biggest cost of all is the downtime. You know, we're seeing rugged tablets, the total cost of ownership is literally, you know, half that of, of other devices. So VDC has looked at the areas that can become the biggest cost hits and how to reduce them. Software development is expensive, so reusing the existing software is the best way to manage the cost. Um, again, going back to how do you decide these things, you, you start with the workflow, uh, you define what applications are needed to, to handle the workflow, and then you choose the operating system and then the device that fits that workflow the best. You know, the operating system isn't the graphical unit you know, interface that we think of, like for, for, for Windows or, or iOS. It, it, the operating system is the basic ability to, to support and run the applications. That's the way you need to think of it. How, how you touch the device and use the device, that, that's pretty easy to do on, on any of the different operating systems. It's really about how does this fit into your back end? Uh, can it run multitasking efficiently? Does it provide the security, the access that the IT managers need? Those, those are the questions you should be asking yourself about the choice of operating system. Um, 
back office integration, another critical area. Most organizations, before mobile deployment, they've had a really good job of, of uh, integrating necessary functions, but in some cases, this was refined over the years. So choosing a mobile solution that isn't integrated is not just adding some costs, it's adding lots of costs. Uh, it's also a lot of time and complexity in your organization. Choose, choose to make, you know, make the choice that, that makes your life the easiest. Training is the third area, um, and the training cost is directly related to how similar or different the, the mobile workflow is to, you know, compared to what, what devices were used previously. Peripherals often help automate tasks, right? Peripherals that are designed to be used with your mobile tablets, like barcode scanners, they work better with lower integration costs than peripherals from third parties. Uh, you'll have to try them out, see which ones work. When you buy everything integrated from one manufacturer, it just works. It's easy. Change management and security are other cost drivers that should be considered with any new rollout, and there are definitely big differences between rugged devices and, and consumer devices when it comes to those type of, of costs. So when VDC added up the costs, they were able to prove that rugged tablets cost about half uh, in total in the long term, uh, the cost of deploying non-rugged devices. So look at the key cost drivers, especially the productivity costs and your IT support costs. And this doesn't even really include the lost opportunity costs that we mentioned earlier. So what could you be doing with all that extra time that you're not spending on, on fixing broken consumer devices? Um, the rugged tablets are clearly the answer. So at the end of the day, rugged tablets are the answer. Rugged tablet PCs, they run the necessary software, they have all the features that you need, features you can't even find uh, in consumer devices. Uh, we've got accessories that were built for the specific rugged workflows, whether it's vehicle docks, they're light enough to carry all day long. They don't need protective cases. They got long battery life, and they can be used outside. So they're offered with processors up to the Intel i7 or as something as light as an Atom based on the workflow. You have a lot of options in rugged devices. You can you can fit the device to to your guys and what they want to do. Big vibrant screens, great keyboards. Um, Basically, they can be used as a desktop PC. You can use it as a notebook with a keyboard. You can take it in the in the field and use it as a as a tablet standing up. So, kind of all the three three main areas you want to work in, you know, in the office, in the vehicle, on a desk, standing up. You can do it all. These devices, the best thing about them, man, is they'll survive. <laughs> they're going to live and they're going to be there for you. Uh, the rugged tablet's extreme tolerance to environmental stress is is really, at the end of the day, what, what makes it win. Yeah, you might say you could replace cheaper tablets. I could fix them one or two, get, get two, or, two or three of these even for the price of a rugged tablet. Yeah, and you will be doing that. <laughs> uh, they're going to break. Those non-rugged tablets will break, and you'll have to replace them. So there's more to it than just the cost of the tablet. Do you have to be constantly setting up new tablets with new software and new apps? Do you have to put device management? Um, you know, all these down-the-road type costs, loss of producti productivity time for the field techs. Every, ta every hour without a tablet is an hour they're not working. So in the end, rugged tablets, it's a great choice. So hopefully by now we've convinced you um, the rugged tablets actually save you money and they're much cheaper than the other mobile devices. When you look at the total cost of ownership and you consider the cost of the replacements, the cost of actually doing the replacements, and the cost of the te technician's downtime, um, and what else you could actually be doing with that time, tablet PCs are a true platform. They're capable of supporting whatever requirements might be needed. They're future-proof. They allow you to work on new service opportunities. Thank you very much uh, for your time and attention.